Hey there, Lotus Breach fans. Brian Cook. About two months ago, I uploaded a video on a four, four or five color deck, whatever you want to call it. You can find that video in the card above. That video did very poorly analytics wise. And I'll be honest with you, it made it so I haven't uploaded the deck in a couple months. Instead, I've been focusing on other modern decks like the Gruel Breach deck or the Racto Storm deck that you saw here. Basically, taking a break from this deck. Well, over this weekend, I decided that I was going to try to record another video using some of the things that I learned from those decks. So Dragon's Rage Channeler, Gigantha, they didn't go well. I'm going to be just flat out honest with you. 03 drop, 04 drop, just not what I was looking to do. And it wasn't that the deck was bad. It was that I was consistently just short of winning. Well, why was that? Dragon's Rage Channeler didn't work the way that I wanted it to in my practice leagues it was fine but they were small sample sizes when i expanded that sample it just wasn't working and that's something that sometimes you find um basically you turn on your opponent's removal it's really bad against the best decks in the format that have things like lightning bolt in them and i mean it was really great for turning otherworldly gaze into additional copies of tome scour right but ultimately it just wasn't worthwhile and if you play gigantha it doesn't work when you board an Ave, so you have to cut Ave. In the matchups that you want Gigantha, because whatever reason, typically you put it to your hand to discard against something like uh, Croxa or Liliana, you board in Leyline of Sanctity anyway. You can't run Street Wraith, and then people wanted to see Ad Nauseam. It was terrible. It changes your fetch patterns. Uh, you're often too low on life to actually cast it. I was not a fan. So instead of appeasing the audience and giving them something new, I'm just going to play what I would actually play if I was to play this deck in a tournament tomorrow. So hopefully you can appreciate that. But I tried to play the channelers as a, you know, a reason for people to watch a new list. Uh, I tried the ad nauseum because people have been asking for it in the comment sections, but none of that stuff is working. And I'd rather just play something that I would genuinely rather play. So that's what we're doing today. Um, so we're back to playing four Street Wraith because they work so well with Otherworldly Gaze and Mishra's Bobble. That was something that I've missed a lot is the speed that this card provides. So it also digs you deeper into finding Lotus Field at a faster cost. And speaking of being faster, we have Gemstone Caverns in the sideboard. This deck wins a lot of game ones and then sort of flounders in the post-board game when your points are on the play. So this is for matchups where you're looking for speed. So Hammer Time, Burn, whatever, um, that sort of thing. Ave, I did try some matches without this. When your opponent has a lot of graveyard hate, it can not be great when you don't have it. If you're bringing in Ave, you're usually boarding out Street Wraith. Not that the two need to be directly correlated, but it's usually the cut I'm making. Uh, depends on the matchup, obviously, but that's something that I've found. It does have some friction with Pact and Negation because you can't Pact and then pass the turn for Ave. Uh, in general, I found that I was having a lot of trouble boarding in all my removal, so I had a lot of suspends previously. I've changed those to Gemstone Caverns for speed, and then you have three removal spells for three copies of Spell Pierce, which is usually how we align those. And then you have the two lands for Pact and Negations or a Needle or whatever. So that's my deck tech. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. I've tried to record this deck three times over the weekend, and it's been a nightmare. Well, technically this is the third. So back to what I would actually play. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. And I'll be completely honest, if this video doesn't do well on the analytics wise, uh, it might be more than two months to the next upload. So thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. See you in the first match. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicstorm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to the first match. We are on the play. Grix's Street Wraith Storm, and wow, what a hand. This hand is fantastic. We are keeping this. This is, in fact, a turn three win. Wishclaw here is likely getting Underworld Breach, in case you haven't pieced that together. Uh, one thing I, I didn't go over in the deck tech, let's say you're just watching this video for the first time, you've never seen this deck before. The idea is that you want to get Lotus Field onto the table. Okay, that's step one. 
And then you use effects like Twiddle to generate mana. Basically, they are blue copies of Dark Ritual. It looks like we're facing Hammer Time. Okay, so Twiddle, Blue Dark Ritual. You're following me so far. Okay, well then with Underworld Breach, you can rescape Twiddle over and over again. I imagine you're still with me. That is pretty easy to understand. So with Tome Scour, we can mill five. So every time you tap Lotus Field, you are making three blue, you get two Scours and a Twiddle, and then you break even. Well, that is always plus one card in your graveyard. So eventually you cast enough Twiddles and Tome Scours to increase Storm and fill up your graveyard. Eventually you cast a Lethal Grape Shot, and then you win the game. Letting your opponent draw a card off Wish Claw Talisman. Land number two. Sir Garter's Aid. Hammer. So we will be taking 11 here and then attempting to dead our opponent. Ouch. I'm at five life. Take a draw. Blue, blue, Lotus Field. Now we twiddle the Lotus Field. If you activate Wish Claw first, it does not go well for you because. You then end up with a red mana floating, and we don't want 11. Or I'm sorry, we don't want a red mana floating. We can't win with a red mana. So we are untapping this Lotus Seal, tapping it now for red. And when you do it this way, you end up with a blue floating. And with that blue floating, we win the game. Underworld Breach is at the table. Okay, so I'm not going to pretend that our difference of not having Dragon's Reach Channeler or Ad Nauseam mattered here. Uh, but it's only one game let's not counter chickens and now we've assembled the combo from is five whittle the lotus field untap tap for three blue you get the idea so at this point it's kind of just milling ourselves until we hit the grape shot from scour again storms eight dream script untap target permanent and there's our grape shot so we no longer need to mill ourselves. Instead, we're just going to untap a few times and then cast the grape shot twice. Yes. So now we tap for red and grape shot is lethal. From 11. Click, click, boom. Take that hammer. Our copies of grape shot are resolving and then we're just going to cast another one. One thing I do enjoy about the street wraith list, by the way, is when you're playing the Dragon's Ridge Chandler list or the list with Ad Nauseam, whatever in it, you're more constrained on slots. And why does that matter, right? Because, you know, cards taking up other slots, whatever that is. With this list, we have two copies of Tome Scour. Naturally, having it saves so much time and mana and resources. So we were able to win that game very easily with a stock graveyard, it was beautiful. But when you only have one of these, you more often than not have to find it with Wish Claw Talisman, which creates extra work or chaining it together with other really gays only looking for a one of, we have two here. On top of that, when I was on the Ad Nauseam list without Street Wraiths, Street Wraith is a free look at land number two, much like Mitra's Bobble for your Lotus Field. I felt like I was obligated to play Ottawara over Void Snare, and then I was bit twice in two leagues by it not being Void Snare and instead of being Ottawara's land number 20. So I think Street Wraith kind of glues the deck together in a meaningful way. All right, enough of me rambling. Let's sideboard. We definitely want these gemstone caverns. We want the suspend. We don't want pack negation. We don't want spell pierce. Spell pierce is fine, but not really what we want to be doing. That's 58. Uh, so the void snare, and then you could do the needle or the echoing truth. I think both are relatively fine. I really view the needle for Besaju matchups, and this is not a Besaju matchup. It's a myth. Unfortunate. Mulligan. All right, so we have a lot of filter here. We'll get rid of the grape shot and keep this. Gemstone Cavern's not coming up. Turn one relic, okay. Wish I had a needle right now. Take a draw. We have the Void Snare. Play out the bobbles. Pass the turn. Land number two into Sanctifier. Okay. Someone doesn't like losing the graveyard decks. We'll bobble ourselves, whittle. We'll keep that. We'll draw into it. This doesn't go to the graveyard due to the Sanctifier. I probably should have responded with this before. I guess the Sanctifier would have exiled it anyway, actually. Um, so we've drawn our Twiddle. Now we'll do this again. We don't need another Twiddle, so we'll fetch. 
grab the watery grave, I suppose. And now we'll draw two. Another twiddle. Consider draw for turn. Wraith. We'll just pass. Land number three. Okay. Stone Forge. We pick up a hammer. We're falling to 15. On their end step, we'll cast Consider. We don't need another Breach. Draw another Dream Script. So we have plenty of mana. I'm just not sure if that's relevant. What we need is a Lotus Field. Sure, you can exile a Flooded Strand. Draw for turn. We'll play Gemstone Caverns and pass. Saga goes up to two counters. We know that they have a hammer in hand. The swing will take three down to 11. Sure. I can't but wonder if I'm supposed to cycle the three wreath here. I think the answer is yes in case I draw until I can consider or otherworldly gaze. Or island. Don't think we're capable of winning this game anymore. But I'm going to try to get them to crack the relic using the void snare. Okay, exile all graveyards. Okay, cool. Play this. And I think I'm going to change my... Especially game three when we're on the play, we can board out the gemstone caverns and that makes room for needle. And we can board a needle. They're making a construct. And another construct. Okay. Haywire might. And they have the temple garden. Okay. They're swinging for a lot here. Seven, that puts me to two... I guess it's fine for me to burn the con or burn the twiddle on the construct. So I think if I allow this to happen, the only way that I can win is if I draw for turn. The card is consider, and then I consider into Lotus Field. The only possible way I can win. Oh, they just have lethal, so now I'm forced. Okay, we're just gonna concede. I should have responded with another grip. I mean, I still could, but they just have lethal on the next turn. Um, yeah. Okay. Next. Yeah, we're fine. Whew. Take out the gemstone. Bring in the needle. Do I want to consider Ave? Is that crazy? Sure, let's do one Ave. Game three on the play. I suppose. It's not an amazing hand. Play the bobble. We'll target ourselves. Dreams grip. So you could scour yourself here. Or you could just fetch. I think I'll just fetch. Grab the watery grave. We'll pass the turn. In their upkeep with that draw on the stack, we'll cast Otherworldly Gaze. We just have to mill these. None of these cards actually help me. Alright, so we're drawing a random card off the Mishra's Bobble. It's another Bobble. Temple Garden. That's for Sentinel. Okay, so we draw another land. They're going to draw a card off the Esper Sentinel here. A little bit annoying. I think I'm actually supposed to fetch first because of the Esper Sentinel. So we'll Sentinel ourselves, Void Snare, Other Really Gaze. I think I just have to mill these until I find something that's actually helpful. We need under We need Lotus Field and we need Underworld Breach. Another bobble. The guard is aid. That's good. We're not even close to being able to win here. Okay. I go to five. Draw for turn. Another land. 19 land duck. Oh, and we're almost a third of the way through. Draw your card. I think they're going to get me here. I mean, I could have mulliganed our hand, but it was fine. And now I have to twiddle their Esper Sentinel to stay alive. I think I'm just dead. Draw a card off the bobble. Otherworldly Gaze. So the problem here is that Otherworldly Gaze cannot draw both Underworld Breach and Lotus Field. We went really deep into our library too. And even with the twiddle here, we're dead. Because they can just put another hammer on Ornithopter. So game two, they had the disruptive draw. Game three, they had the aggro draw. And we're dead. Because I, I'm forced to twiddle here. And then they just put it on the ornithopters. So they got me. Unfortunate. We didn't have a Lotus Field coming. Yikes. Bummer. Zero and one.
Moxfield.com is the easiest way to build a Magic deck online. They support over 30 formats, including Legacy and many other Eternal formats. There are so many options to view decks the way that you want, from text view to individual cards, mana value, and even card price. There's also light mode and dark mode. My personal favorite feature is card tags. This way you can sort cards by function. Moxfield supports collection tracking, scryfall search, deckless feedback, and so much more. Follow me on Moxfield.com so you can stay updated on all of my decks. Match two on the play. This hand technically has everything we need, assuming I can draw a black source. We'll play Island, Mishra's Bobble. We'll target ourselves, and if we don't want the card, we can Thought Scour. And it's the Watery Grave, or solo black source. Obviously, we have fetch lands too, but it's our only true black source. Steam Vents. Old Ragavan, yep. How oh, could you get tired of facing this card? Another Dreams Grip. Ouch. Wish Claw Talisman. Pass the turn. Our opponent plays Polluted Delta. They attack. I'll go down to 16. Ragavan Exiles. A Wish Claw Talisman. So they could also have their own Wish Claw. They are fetching with Polluted Delta. It looks like an expressive iteration here. If this was the case, they probably weren't supposed to play their land first. Nope, they're playing the claw. Okay. Sure. Lotus Field. Let's see it. I mean, that's really good, too. Activate Wish Claw. Go get the field. Blue mana. Play Lotus Field. So if they don't interact with the first Twiddle, I believe we win. Twiddle Lotus Field. Uh-oh. Dream's Grip. Untap. That for red mana, we'll play an Underworld Breach. No, you may not. Sorry. Breach. Riddle. Yes. That for blue. Scour ourselves. Just having double scour has been so nice. I got myself, Street Wraith, Land, Spell Pierce. Riddle, the Lotus Field. Okay, I know we lost match number one, but playing this list, it just feels better than the other ones that I was playing earlier this weekend. And it might just be a bias because this is what I like. I'm willing to admit that, but so far it feels better to me. Firm is 11. There's our Grape Shot. So we either have to double Grape Shot or just cast some more spells. I think it's just easier to cast a few more spells. All right, that's spell 14. They're at 15, so we can just Grape Shot now. All right, so it looks like we've gotten game number one over Is It Murktide? Packed an indication back up in the graveyard as well, in case for some reason they had something weird. Game two versus Is It Murktide? We are on the draw, but I don't think Gemstone Caverns is really what this matchup is about. I'm not going to bring those in. I am interested in the packs. Void Snare answers Blood Moon, so I think we probably want the Bounce Spells. I think we're interested in Eve as well. Get rid of these Street Wraiths. So it's 63 cards. Probably shave one Tome Scour versus a blue deck. Now we're at 62. Maybe a pair of Consider. Try this out. You could also not board in the Echoing Truth, I suppose. Double Who's. I don't think we're allowed to keep this one. Mulligan. I guess so. Um, not a great hand. Turn one Spire Bluff Canal, and they're just passing. We'll play out the pair of Bobble. One Bobble into another. Look at our top card. Don't think I'm interested in land two, so I'm going to fetch. And we'll look at their top card. And I'm doing this because if we draw into another really gaze, I want to be able to cast it. By... Fetching Island, we're also de-incentivizing them for trying to accelerate into something like Blood Moon. They mill the island, so they're not interested in a land. Breach, that's good. Packed, okay. Those were both fine draws. Two mana. For a dash Dragovan, you got it. So this is going to hit me and knock me down to 17 life. Dragovan exiles a twiddle, sure thing. Goes back to their hand. They have six cards. We'll draw for turn. Would have loved to see a Lotus Field there. 
Not that I'm upset with the Twiddle, but Lotus Field is what we need. Play Wish Claw. If they have Spell Pierce or Spell Snare here, I can't afford to fight over this. Okay. Wish Claw down. If we can just draw a Lotus Field, we have a win with backup. They play Ragavan normally. No dash this time. I think that's because they're holding open Counterspell. But even so, you could dash it and still have that open. Draw for turn. Spell Pierce. Does not help me. I can hang on to the Void Snare for Blood Moon, or I can try to slow down Ragavan. I think if they had Blood Moon, they probably would have played it. So I'm going to just bounce. Pass the turn. They play another Misty. And they're just hard casting the Ragavan again. This doesn't make sense to me, but their hand must be a bunch of interaction then, right? Draw for turn. Another spell pierce we have to pass. They fetch out two basics, so maybe they do have Blood Moon. Ragavan hits, we go to 12. Spell pierce, that's annoying. Because if they have Blood Moon, they can force through the Blood Moon now. And they're just passing, okay. Guess we're not drawing Spell Pierce 3. That's nice. And then again, we are not drawing anything good either. Ragavan puts us down to 10 life. They exile the island number 3. Ledger Shredder with 4 cards in hand. Steam Vents, they're not 3 cards in hand. Come on, Lotus Field, please. Let's see it. We have to pass. Ragavan connects. So we're going to take 3 here down to 7. And they hit my ooze. They can actually play it off Triple Treasure. No! <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's a bobble. They look at her top card. Oh, they're going to play the ooze. Yeah, it's slime time. You've got it. I don't think that they would have made this play if I had a relevant card on top of my deck. But we'll see. Come on, please, deck. Give me Lotus Field. I think we're dead. All right, next game. So I could try to twiddle their creatures, but by doing so, I don't actually have a win uh, on the next turn. And we just never had a field coming. That wish claw being countered was really huge for them. I think I'm going to shave the ooze and I'm going to play more considers, especially after they know about it. A little bit more consistency, maybe mulligan less. On the play. Pretty good hand we'll keep. Misty past the turn. Fiery Islet into Ragavan. Sure thing. Grab a Steam Vents. Other Worldly Gaze. So milling the Grape Shot's obviously a little bit dangerous here. I'm going to keep the Consider, which might seem odd, but I plan on Void Sneering the Ragavan anyway, and it gives me a little bit of selection. We're going to bounce the Ragavan just because it slows them down. And then consider... We'll mill the Twiddle. Did not need another land. They pick up a Steam Vents. They're at 16. They don't dash Ragavan this time. We'll take a draw. Spell Pierce. And step they consider. I don't hate our current spot. In the beginning of their combat step, we will Echoing Truth the Ragavan. If they play a Blood Moon here, I have Spell Pierce up. They fetch Basic Island. Two mana for an expressive iteration. That's fine. Once again, you're supposed to not play your land if you're going to do that, because now they have a Missy going to exile that they could have played. We'll fetch down to 16, go grab Watery Grave. We're just looking for an Underworld Breach. Unreal Breach wins this game right now. Draw for turn. Unfortunately, it's a land. Play out the Delta and pass. So you might be saying, Bryant, why aren't you playing Blood Moon? Or why aren't you playing Lotus Field? Blood Moon's a card. And if I just hold up and Spell Pierce, I can pay for an opposing Spell Pierce as well. And they chose to keep the Consider card. That's a Ragavan. They're passing with six cards in hand. That's very scary. Grab an Island. Otherworldly Gaze. Am I supposed to draw or pass on this Pact? I feel like we might want it. I know it's not an Underworld Breach, but even if I draw Breach here, I, I feel like it's not going to win. Pass the turn. 
They're connecting with Ragavan. Quiddle. And here's Blood Moon, and they can pay for Spell Pier. Okay. We have to let that go. We do have a Void Snare in the graveyard. So if I draw Underworld Breach, this actually doesn't matter. They were very, very patient on this Blood Moon. I felt like they've had it for a while. But, uh... Yeah, they were very patient. They made sure that they could protect it. Wishclaw here would have been good pre-Blood Moon. Not so good post-Blood Moon. They hit my Wishclaw. It looks like they're playing it. And then they're passing. Okay. Underworld Breach. Does not help me. Pass the turn. They also have a handful of counter spells at this point. Even if I draw Breach, I feel like I'm in trouble. Press of Iteration. Lightning Bolt, so that brings me down to six. Come on, deck. Painful. Pass. Definitely feel like I'm rolling a little bit low on the variant spectrum, but it happens. RNG, not in my favor. They had to consider. Milling a Mark Tide. Red four. Come on, Underworld Breach. Consider. Mill Spell Pierce. Pass the turn. So 50% of the way through the deck never found an Underworld Breach. None of them were exiled to um, Ryvan either. Kind of wild. Okay, 0 and 2. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and Mana tokens, as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. I guess you could say things are going well. We're zero and two playing in match number three. We need to get one, so let's do that. This hand is phenomenal, we'll keep. It stinks because my record this weekend with this deck has not been good. I haven't even gotten a match win this weekend with this deck. So obviously things are running a little bit cold for me at the moment. But when I play this with Street Wraith, I genuinely believe that they feel better. And I'm not just trying to blow smoke. Uh, I do think that they're better. I mean, we won two both of our first couple rounds. And both of those rounds could have been wins had things broken a different way. We're in the previous leagues, and it looks like we're facing Is it again. I never really felt like, like I was always short, but they felt more like blowouts than these two matches have. Okay, fetching. We'll grab the steam vents. This way we can float mana next turn, assuming that we want to go off. Play the wish claw, pass the turn. Opponent plays a Mishra's bobble. They use the bobble, they play another steam vents, and they're attacking. So it looks like they're probably leaving up counterspell mana if they're not going to play something pre-combat. So they're drawing off Bobble. We'll take a draw. Consider. I could try to win here, but it's just not protected. So I think instead we'll play the basic and just pass the turn. You don't have to play into your opponent's interaction. It's, I feel like that's a pretty important thing to make note of sometimes. Because people will... They're just like, well, this is what the deck does. And they'll jam into two blue, open blue mana. And it's like, do you really? is that really what you want to be doing here? Just like running into your opponent's counter spell head first. You don't have to play spells just because you can. And here you'll see that they played a turn three Ragavan, uh, leaving up blue blue. So our opponent's sending us a message. Just look at it. Like read between the lines here. We'll play consider. This was good. We'll keep that. Cycle Street Wraith. Yeah, we're ready to party now. Okay, so we'll untap, we'll take a draw. Spell Pierce, they are dead. D-E-D, -E -D, dead. Lotus Field. Go to the field. Untap the Lotus Field. We'll now tap this for a red Underworld Breach. To my surprise, my opponent cast Counterspell. I can't believe it. So we'll let them have their Surveil Trigger. They Surveil away. Murktide will play the Pact of Negation. Underworld Breach now resolves. Play another twiddle. Yes, I'd like to untap. They're at 13. Can I just double grape shot here? 
I believe the answer is yes. Okay, we'll twiddle again. Untap. Use the claw. Grab grape shot. Boom. Lethal. So this copy of grape shot's resolving, then we'll just escape it again. We even have enough to grape shot a third time. Okay. Team number two. Facing is it once again, we'll bring in Pact Negation. The answer is to Blood Moon. And an Ave. We boarded out the second Tome Scour last time. I think we'll do that again. Hit Cement. Okay. This is a very solid hand. We'll keep. We do need land number two and a Twiddle, but things are looking good. Turn one channeler. Bobble. We'll play the bobble, target ourselves. Another bobble on top. We'll gaze. I don't really need another bobble here. Loving the pact. We're going to keep that as well. Pass the turn. Channeler number two. Mishra's bobble. Get two surveil triggers. They surveil away a bobble and a murk tide. Okay. So land instant, land sorcery. That could do it. It looks like they're leaving open spell peers. Okay. I think I'm going to play the Wishclaw anyway. I, I, th I believe I would rather them just use it. It does make their creatures better, but if they don't have it, I'm highly rewarded. And here we are. Okay. I need to draw a Twiddle. Uh-oh, is this Blood Moon? Are you going to slam a Blood Moon here? That was a very fast fetch shuffle. If they slam Blood Moon, we can play Wish or we can play Lotus Field underneath it and it would come into play untapped. We would then use the basic to void center the Blood Moon. And then we have Consider and Wish Claw. So we could go get a Twiddle with the Wish Claw, but I think I'd rather try to consider first. It's tough. Uh because I would have to hit the Ooh, they just have a braid, okay. But I'd have to hit a twiddle. I mean, there's eight of them in the deck. It's not unreasonable. They destroyed my wish claw. And now they're attacking for six, and I'm going down to ten. Draw for turn is another wish claw. Play it. They have three in hand. I'm going to play out the Lotus Field. If they Blood Moon me here, obviously it feels bad. But I think I'm going to need the mana on the combo turn. So that's why I'm choosing to play it out. Land number four. They swing, we go to four life. They have three cards in hand, and we do it. Treader, I'm good with that. And a channeler, so they have one card, and we have a pact. Things are looking good for the home team. Unlicensed hearse, okay. And we do it. We find field number two. Okay, so step one. We also have the Void Snare to bounce Wish Claw. So we'll go get a Dream Script. Untap the Lotus Field. They know that we have a pact in hand. Okay, we'll counter the mystical dispute. I was going to say before they played the dispute that the only card that I could think of that beat me here would be Cluster Storm, but they just didn't have it. Okay, so now they actually gave me an extra card to the graveyard too. Okay, now we tap the Lotus Field for red. Play this Underworld Breach. We have nine cards in graveyard, so we get a couple escapes here. I can Void Snare this. I think... I believe that's the play. We'll Void Snare the Wish Claw. Untap. This gives us a little bit of extra escape fuel. Tap again. And now we Dream Script. Tons of mana. Tap this Wish Claw for black. We'll Wish Claw Talisman. And now this Wish Claw can go get... Um, Home Scour. One thing to note is Void Snare here was a combo piece where Atawara would not have been able to do that. Scour. Scour again. From 10. Untap with Dream Grip. Um, scour. At this point, we're just going through the motion. Like, I know that this part's kind of boring, but we've already won the round. Okay, now we need to untap. From 15. Guess we're removing some Dream Scripts here. From 18, now we're just looking for Grape Shot. Home Scour. That's an Underworld Breach. Scour again. Is it in the bottom four? It is! 
It's in the bottom four of our deck. That's just fine. Scour and group shot. It's from 23. Well, I got my first match win on the weekend. That's something, I guess. Uh, well, with Lotus Breach, I should say. Obviously, I would like to win the last two rounds. I do think that the list that I'm playing is a lot better than the list that we're play that I was playing previously. Like the channelers and the ad nauseum and everything. Like I was trying defense grid too. All that stuff really wasn't working. This is back to something that I actually like. I mean, it's it stinks that I lost the last two, but I have full confidence we can turn this around. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Match four, our opponent has began by revealing a Kahira the Orphan Guard. Typically against Kahira decks, Pact of Negation shines because they, they're usually blue. So we're going to keep this and, uh, you know, hopefully counter some Force Negations or Endurance or whatever. All right, Bobble. Target myself. Land number four. Don't really want that, so we'll fetch. Grab our Watery Grave. Pass the turn. Regrin Triome. Okay, so this might be a match where we get to have Leyline Binding versus Pact Negation. Two mana for Chalice of the Void. Ugh, really wish I had that out of water now, huh? And I don't have a Spell Pierce. Consider. I can go to the Graveyard. I don't think our main deck is capable of beating this card. In fact, I know it's not. We don't have a single answer to Chalice. Play Bobble, target them, and I'm going to pick it up. That's unfortunate. Yeah, we're just cold to Chalice of the Void. I mean, I still think that Void Snare is better, but obviously it was very good there. Okay, so we want Echoing Truth, the Aves. I think we might want the packs. We're at 62. I think I'm going to board out some other Royal Gaze versus a dedicated control deck. Our disadvantage is not where we want to be. Let's try this out. We're actually bored out of Scour. Bring back one of those. There we go. Game two. Let's try to bounce back from that tough game one loss. This seems reasonable. We're a Tome Scour and a second land away. Blooded Strand pass. Opponent plays a Triumph and passes. We're not going to fetch because we're trying to draw another land. Wrong land. Pass the turn. They play a Flooded Strand and quickly activate it. Figured Foundry. So they have all five colors now. Red, green. Three, red, and six. I'm going to Spell Pierce this because if I don't... Granted, they could Chalice of the Void later, whatever. I understand. But they could just pay for Chalice of the Void tax at a later point and the Spell Pierce becomes dead. So I'm going to try to keep them off better mana. Draw for turn. There we go. So once again, I am just a scour away. We could try with something like Otherworldly Gaze, but that wouldn't get the job done. The Fairy Time Raveler. Unfortunately, that resolves. Um, so this Pact of Negation is now dead. Come on, Doc, please. Come on. Lotus Field 3, that's so brutal. That is rough. That's the turn. They play Flooded Strand. So it looks like the Ren was uh, not important to their mana development. Omnath, okay. We can still win if we just draw something good. Please. That's not it. Pass the turn. They play a Fetch. They activate it. So now Omnath is going to make them four mana. Kahira to hand. And playing Kahira. So their Omnath is now a 5-5, five, five, 3 open mana. They have not downticked the Teferi yet. Draw for turn. Let's bounce the Teferi, or at least attempt to. Okay. Dream Script on tap Lotus Field. Dream Script on tap Lotus Field. Play the Consider. That could win the game, assuming that they don't have... More than one way to interact. Underworld Breach. Okay. 
Attempt to untap Lotus Field. Rebuild Pact and Negation, the prismatic ending. Dream script. Tap for blue. Dream script again. And it looks like they're F6'd at this point, so I think we have it. Firm is 10. I'm a mana short of grape shot working. So we're going to have to get the scour. Target ourselves. Okay, so I believe at this point we're just going through the motions. Now we scour again. There's the grape shot. We need a cream more storm though. Scour. Untap. We have seven in graveyard, so we can double grape shot from here. Cool. So grape shot's resolving, and then we're going to escape it one final time. Sweet. Now we just have to get game number three. I wonder if we want gemstone on the draw. I'm not actually convinced Eve is that good here. I'm going to try this out. Game number three. We're facing what I assume is elementals. Our opponent's taking a mulligan. We have the Echoing Truth for Chalice of the Void in our hand already. You could ship this. I mean, Wishclaw gets Lotus Field. The Grape Shot's sort of a mulligan already. I think I'm going to mull. Like, this hand just feels a little bit lackluster to me. Uh, double packed. I'm going to be a coward and keep this. We have Spell Pierce for the Chalice of the Void. We, we need a lot of cards for this hand to function, but it's not exactly a fast matchup either. Play the bobble. We'll pass. Zagoth Trium, okay. Sacred Foundry. There's that Chalice. So, me deciding to wait on the bobble. Obviously, I can't get the scry effect I wanted now. Not sure how much it matters. I mean, I would have preferred it, but I wouldn't have wanted to. So the thing is, I didn't do it because I didn't want to telegraph. Our opponent's trying a leyline binding. Uh, I didn't want to telegraph that I wanted to get a shock untapped. That's why I didn't do it. So we were able to cheese out a chalice of the void with our spell pierce by hiding this information. Field was a very good draw. Pack number three, less so. <laughs> okay. Well, if we're able to attempt to win, we're certainly going to make sure it all resolves, assuming that they don't play Teferi. We need to find a Twiddle and Tome Scour. Play the Lotus Field. Pass the turn. Consider into a Twiddle, I would probably try to win with that, or at least create some value. They return Flooded Strand. We know that they have Leyline Binding and five Unknowns. Well, one of the Unknowns is a Flooded Strand. There it is. They just passed the turn. Okay, come on, Dak, please. Bummer. Play the Misty and pass the turn. They're at 14 life. They use the Ren. We do have to worry about the Ren Emblem eventually. You're here at a hand. Okay. So I wonder if that means that they have a bunch of pitch spells. We'll fetch. Pull out one of our remaining islands. Otherworldly Gaze could do it as well if we mill a twiddle. Bobble, we'll play it. I want to represent strength, so I'm going to play this untapped. Do you fetch? Let's look at their top card, I guess. Forest. And they draw it, so we know that they're drawing forest this turn. They return Flooded Strand. Is this a Kahira? It is. The Orphan Guard on the battlefield. We have two draws on our turn. We need a Twiddle effect, and we need some way to mill cards. That's an Eve Progenitor Ooze. Unfortunately, I don't think Breach is the right move here. This is what I was talking about in the deck tech, where Pact and Eve don't really play well together. I've played leagues without the Eve, and I just felt like the deck, it's missing something to dodge graveyard hate. And I'm not sure what that is. Eve always feels lackluster with the Pact. So there's a natural friction there, but I'm not sure what else to do. And our opponent can ultimate the run here. Instead, they return Flooded Strand. They attack with Kahira. So that puts me to 11. We're also going, we're at 44 cards left in deck. We haven't seen a Twiddle or any Cantrip yet. 
Well, I can't trip that works with Breach. Is this Teferi? Teferi would be very bad for me. They're passing, okay. Fetch. This is the last island that's about to be pulled out of the deck. Otherworldly gaze into Twiddle, come on. They discard a Leyline Binding. Another Bobble. Well, I guess I can play Ave for two. Uh, not really what I wanted to be doing here. Bobble targeting them. They have an expressive iteration coming. Leyline Binding. Sure. And another Leyline Binding. You got it. Endurance. Okay. Obviously, that's not ideal with Underworld Breach. But our opponent did just play three cards that I care about. That would have been our three packs. So I'm kind of glad that I played out the Eve to beat those. Considers reasonable here. Okay, so they ulted their Ren Emblem. They're attacking for seven, so I only get one turn. They're going to combat, so seven coming in, I'll go to three. The, I think the only way that I can think of that I die here is if they Omnath with like enough land drops or lands entering to kill me. I don't know what direct damage spell this deck would actually play. On their end step, we'll play the Consider. Mill the Twiddle. I mean, milling Twiddle is good here, and then we draw another. So we need to find like Tome Scour or some way to get Scour this turn. This We don't have a land that works with this, so we're going to play... Unreal Breach, and we're really all in on this Consider. We, we're hoping that they try to fight me on the stack, so that way I can play these Pact Negations. Force Negation, Pitching, Expressive Iteration. I will Pact. Underworld Breach. They can retrace using the Ren. They Force Negation again, I will Pact. Underworld Breach. Is this another retrace? I will pact again. They have one card in hand. Twiddle the Lotus Field. It's worth noting that I think if we find Grape Shot, Grape Shot might be good enough. We'll play the Flooded Strand. There's no land for us to get here. I'm just playing it so that I can escape. Oh no, we do have a land to get. What have I been thinking? All right, I'll grab an island. Tap for a blue. Consider. We will escape... A land and a couple packs, I guess. Underworld Breach is not what we need. We'll mill. Another Dream Script. Hold on. Make sure that I'm doing this correctly. Untap. Really all in on this Consider. Underworld Breach. Act. Whittle. Void Snare. Doesn't do anything. So with the Void Snare, I could keep it and then bounce the Leyline Binding. But... It doesn't really do anything useful. So I'm going to mill this. Huge. Okay. Otherworldly gaze. We're going to mill all of these. Tap this for a blue. We're going to escape otherworldly gaze. Land. Void snare. And a twiddle. None of these do anything we care about. So we're going to mill them. So every time we do this, we're minus one card in graveyard with the otherworldly gaze. But we have enough mana right now that we don't need to twiddle as often. So I think this is fine for the short term. None of these cards do anything we care about. Other really gaze again. Come on, deck, please. Storm is 15. Holy moly. We haven't even seen a Wish Claw. Wish Claw would have worked earlier. I'm not sure if it does now. The really gaze again. There's the Grape Shot. I think that does it. In fact, I know that it does, because we have a red floating. To the graveyard. Grape shot for lethal. Holy moly! That was a sweet one. Wow. That was awesome. That one feels pretty good, I won't lie. That was great. We're 2-2, two and two, one match left. Let's just keep playing tight, get a victory, finish with a positive record. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist.
Welcome to the fifth and final round. We're on the draw. This seems interesting because you don't really have anything other than three lands. Is it better than a mulligan? Probably. You're able to create your own hand. I think it's it's fine. And one thing I hate to do is just mulligan into a loss. Breeding pool? Okay. Crashing footfalls. Okay. Traditionally a tough matchup, but we can make it work. They have four cards in hand. Draw for turn. Land number four. Not really what we wanted here. Crashing footfall suspend. I'm going to just auto yield to that for now. They're playing a land and passing. We'll fetch. I'm going to grab one of the shocks here just so that way I don't have to worry about surveilling them away. Consider. We'll mill that. Dreams grip. Do you want to upkeep ice me? Looks like they do, and I'll just cast another Worldly Gaze. Down to 14 life. We'll cast this Gaze as I mentioned. Both of those were pretty good. Okay. Draw for turn. It's going to be the Wish Claw. We have Lotus Field on top. Crashing Footfalls. And it looks like they're just passing here. End step, other Worldly Gaze. I'm going to keep the Lotus Field still. I guess I can mill one of these. Go to our turn. Are you going to ice me again? Not this time. Play the Wish Claw. Resolves Lotus Field. Okay, pass the turn. Crashing Footfalls. This is the fourth turn, so next turn that will unsuspend. Draw for turn. They have six in hand. Looks like they're going to ice my Wish Claw. That's fine. If they're going to do that, we'll upkeep Otherworldly Gaze. And then we'll draw another Wish Claw. What I'm trying to set up right now is a turn where we have Wish Claw for Underworld Breach and Wish Claw for Pact Negation. We draw the Wish Claw, play the Pluto Delta Pass. Rhinos come off Suspend this turn. Seven cards in hand. We'll fetch down to 16. Grab an island. That means that the Lotus Field needs to be for red. That was actually a good draw. I do like that. Wish Claw Talisman. Untap Lotus Field. Tap for blue. Untap. I think if you tap for red, it signals them more. And I'm not really looking to do that. So now we're going to activate this Wish Claw. Go get Underworld Breach. We have to hope that one Pact of Negation backup is good enough. And that resolved. Really? Okay. Untap the Lotus Field. Storm is five. Tap it again. Let's Otherworldly Gaze. We have enough resources in the graveyard that I want to leave this up. That was beautiful. We get both Spell Pierce and the Scour. So we'll scour ourselves here, Storm 7. Pact and Negation. We still have one Pact in the deck for the Wish Claw. We'll Dream Script to untap the Lotus Field. This will be Storm number 9. And our opponent's kind of taking a long time for everything, so I'm just going to show them that they're dead by casting Grape Shot. We have Grape Shot with double Pact Spell Peers back up. They are now tapping for a blue mana. They're finally doing something. Petty Theft targeting Underworld Breach. So you thought you would get me in the middle of this? Come on, you should know better than that. We'll pack the negation. Now will you just concede instead of wasting time? Let's go. Okay. And now they concede. One game away. I do like the packs here, so I'll bring those in. They are often a Blood Moon deck, so I don't mind the extra bounce spells. Red 64, so I think you probably just take out the street rates. So it is a matchup defined by speed, but I'm not really sure if Jumpstone Caverns is what we want here. I'm trying to think of a card I'd be okay with cutting to bring in extra land. I mean, I guess you could board out like two fetch lands for it, and then if you open on one, that's probably okay. Let's try that. It's not something typically I would do, but I'm open to trying it out. Absolutely not. Mulligan. Yikes. Going to five. 
Keep this, I guess. Get rid of the Grape Shot and Void Snare. Also, now I feel kind of dumb for having Gemstone in my deck. Gemstone's really good when you keep seven cards. It's very bad when you keep less than that because this is a moving pieces deck. So when you keep less than seven, you often don't have the, enough resources to win the game. So maybe that means Gemstone be doesn't belong. I'm not really sure. Obviously, Lotus Yield is a fine draw here, but we still need another land. They get a basic. I can't help but smell a Blood Moon in my future. They suspend Crashing Footfalls. We'll fetch. Grab a basic. Consider. Going to Mystical Dispute this? It finally resolves. We will bend the Otherworldly Gaze. Back to Negation. Not land number two. Unfortunately, we have to pass. They grab a steam vents. Interesting that they did not fetch a basic island. Shardless agent. I feel like we're obligated here to counter the rhinos or else I'm not going to be able to win in time. They have three in hand. Shardless agent resolves. Draw for turn. Not a land we have to pass. When it plays land number four, they quickly use it. They're playing at a very, very slow pace. Breeding pool down to 13. And there's the Blood Moon. So that's going to happen. We can sneak out the Lotus Field. Um, I'm going to choose to look at this with the Silver Lining. I get to get Lotus Field into play now. And then we can flash back other worldly gaze and just look at potentially bouncing the Blood Moon in order to win. And obviously we hit the land after it's too late. Okay, pass the turn. We have two Void Snares and an Echoing Truth that I'm interested in finding. Uh, this Crashing Footfalls is coming off next turn, not this turn, because they suspended it on turn two. They're suspending another Footfalls. They have two cards in hand. And I go to 15. On their end step, we will Otherworldly Gaze. There's Echoing Truth. Okay. I feel like our opponent did us a favor with this Blood Moon. Play the Delta as a mountain, we'll tap, Echoing Truth, your Blood Moon. Okay, so they have Blood Moon and two unknowns in hand. Twiddle. Yes. Twiddle. Yes. Wishclaw Talisman. The Wishclaw Resolves will activate it using the black mana. Grab Underworld Breach. Tap this Lotus Field for red, and now we'll play the Breach, floating a red and a blue. With the blue mana, we have to start on Twiddle. Oh, it looks like somebody might have another Besaju in hand. Nothing I can do about that. Oh, it's Endurance? Sure. Back to Negation. Underworld Breach. Twiddle, untap a Lotus Field. They're tapped out. They have one unknown in hand and a Blood Moon. I can't think of anything in the modern format that would be relevant right now. Maybe a Surgical? But people don't play Surgical. Not not in modern, at least. Yes. Tap for blue. Tome Scour. All right. Target me. Bobble, consider. Spell Pierce. Storm is 10. At this point, we just have to find Grape Shot. Storm 11. Untap. Tap for blue. Tome Scour. I saw two red cards and I got excited that we would have milled uh, Grape Shot so we could have finished this league. Not the case. Twiddle to untap Lotus Field. And what you're seeing here is sort of what I've been thinking about the deck in regards to playing around hate. You can go around a lot of it if you so choose. Like with Eve Progenitor, Ooze, previous list in the past have played Empty the Warrens. But when you run Pact of Negation for Leyline Binding and Endurance and other stuff, None of those plans really work. So you're kind of forced to go through. And cards that pass the turn don't play well, I guess, is what I'm trying to say here. Okay, so we have 24 cards left. We're almost there. Storm 15. And there's the Grape Shot. We'll cast it. Our opponent's doing that thing where they pause a really long time on everything, hoping that you mess up. And that's certainly an angle you can take, but uh, you're not going to get me on that. Woo! We got the 3-2. We rallied back. Let's open up our chest and see if we find anything good. I've never seen this card before in my life, but it looks like a dime rare from 
Eldritch Moon. 35 play points, better than average. Okay, so what did I think about this list? I don't think I'd change anything in the main deck. If you wanted to, if you really, really wanted to, you could cut a basic island for an Atawara. Um, I don't necessarily agree with it. You could also cut a Misty for an Atawara, but I just don't think I want to play that card. Fetches and basics, I think, go a, a more... They get you farther in the long run. Obviously, you're weak to Chalice of the Void on one in the main deck, but I don't know. Uh, I still won that round. In the sideboard, I'm not so sure about Gemstone Caverns or Eve, but I'm not sure better cards that I could put in there that allow you to sidestep Graveyard Hate. If you have any ideas, feel free to let me know. In the past, I've tried things like Channeler, Death Shadow, uh, a bunch of different things, but all of it ultimately feels like it falls short. So if you have anything really, really good, let me know. Uh, thank you for watching. I know that the start of this league was a little bit brutal, but we recovered, thankfully. I still love this deck. It's just, it's tough to record when B, I don't, well, <laughs> I don't know why I started on B. A, the viewership on the previous videos has been terrible. So if you want to see this deck, you need to share it or something, because I can't keep on taking hits to play my favorite modern deck. And two, when I try out weird ideas that people have, they bite me in the butt. And, <clears throat> sorry. I'm dying. I'm just so emotional. Um, like I try out these weird things that people suggest and like they just don't work. Like Ad Nauseam, Channeler. Channeler was me admittedly, but people kept on commenting that they wanted to see Ad Nauseam. So um, I'm not really sure. That's enough of me rambling. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for watching. Keep storming all that good stuff. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.